Today we're talking about some big changes that are coming to our elections thanks to COVID-19 and the changes Dawn is making it possible for us to have a safe election despite the pandemic. And just at this point, I want to acknowledge, I think behind the mask, I see Councilmember Richard Maloney here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Uh, this year, most of us will change how we vote and where we vote. But let's remember why we vote has not changed. Voting is one of the most important things we do. In recent days, many people have marched in our streets to bring change. And another way to make change is through voting. We have that right as citizens of the United States. And these changes in our primary election mean that in order to vote, there are several important steps to take and several important dates to keep in mind. Perhaps the biggest change involves this. This is my personal ballot, uh, Mr. Clerk. I ordered it online and verified who I am and it was sent to me in the mail. So I will vote using this tool. And this primary, just about all of us will vote by mail with one of these absentee ballots. And you'll need to order the ballot, but it's not difficult at all. So I'll ask Dawn to remind everyone about what each of us need to do in order to vote this year. So Dawn Blevins, our Fayette County Clerk. Thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, new times demand new solutions and the situation we've been going through in Kentucky and, and worldwide for that matter with the COVID-19 crisis requires changes in lots of ways for us. One of those ways is with our election process. Uh, the governor and the secretary of state have agreed to expand absentee balloting so that we can all vote by mail. Uh, this morning, the State Board of Elections has approved all the plans for all 120 counties to move forward with, including Fayette. Uh, I'm about to reveal that plan to everyone, but I wanted to let you know that it is approved by the State Board at this point. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue our success at flattening the curve and keep it flat. I want to remind everyone that's why we're doing this. It's not got anything to do with politics. It has everything to do with saving lives. So we're going to vote at home. Kentucky, I'm really proud of us. We're one, we lead the nation, I believe, in our COVID response. Lexington, I would argue, leads the, the state probably in our COVID response, if you don't count the federal penitentiary, right? <laughs> so I want to keep that success going, and I'm going to ask Lexingtonians to do, us, do the right thing and to vote from the comfort of their own kitchen table. It couldn't be easier. All you have to do is request a ballot. There are two ways you can do that. The first one is GoVoteKY.com. You get on the portal like the mayor did, it takes you about a minute, it's no big deal. The request comes down to my office, we fulfill your request, and something like a week or so, you'll get your ballot in the mail. That's all you have to do. I'll encourage you that once you get your ballot, to be sure and be very careful to follow the directions exactly. You must follow the directions all the way, or it's possible that your vote might not be counted if you make a mistake. So take your time, make sure you follow the directions exactly, and then you have two choices to get it back to us. You can mail it to us. It's already got prepaid postage on it. No, nope. couldn't be easy. The state has agreed to pay the postage for you. Or if you're uncomfortable returning it via the mail, you can take it to a drop-off drop location that we're going to establish out at Commonwealth Stadium. On the, southwest, on the southwest corner of the stadium, there's the President's Pavilion. It's near Gate 9. Starting on June the 15th and every day from 8.30 to 4.30, we'll have a drop box where you can drop your ballot off. So this is the primary method we want everyone to use. Uh, this will keep us safe. It will make us have a, a, an easier election if we can do this. Uh, Lexington is already responding to the call. Uh, many of you have already requested your ballots. As of this morning, I had 46,000 ballot requests already. Awesome. 46,000. That's outstanding. We are in the top three in the state for our response rate. I want to be number one. And here's why. 
That's what's going to keep us safe. You can also vote two other ways for our, the, uh, our people in our community that have disabilities. We're going to make available uh, the ability to vote in person by appointment. That will be out at our senior center that is graciously loaned to us by the city. Uh, what, what you'll do is call my office and make an appointment. We'll set you up. I want to restrict this to only those who really need it. Please don't call us for an appointment. If, you, if you're able to either vote in person that I'll describe here in a minute, or better yet, get your ballot by mail and vote at home. Let's vote at home first. But for those, there are a few people that really need this service, and so we're going to provide it for them. That will begin on June the 8th out at the Senior Center. Make your appointment by calling the county clerk's office. The last method to vote is in person on election day. We're going to set up a voting location, only one. It's going to be out at uh, Kroger Field on the south side of the stadium. We're going to set up two lines. There will be signage to guide you. You park in the blue lot, walk up, walk into the inside the interior of the stadium. We're going to try to serpentine lines so that if we do have lines that day, they're able to remain socially distanced as well as under the cover of the roof of the stadium. I would really prefer people not to use this method. I know there are some people who feel strongly they want to vote in person. That's okay, but know the risk that you're taking and the risk that you're putting the election workers. That's not okay. So I would really prefer everyone to vote by mail. Vote at home. It's the easiest way to do it. I believe I've covered all the major components, so I'll take questions at this point. Or at the end. Huh? Or at the end. Or at, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've just been scolded by the mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> it's the nurse in me. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I do want to thank Don Blevins and I also want to thank CAO Sally Hamilton. This has been a great partnership to do this together and be sure we're ready for our citizens to vote. So just a final reminder, as Don mentioned, the city, the city is so happy to be your partner in this and to support you with the changes we need to have a safe election. And so uh, together with Dawn, we've put together a great web page that will answer any questions citizens might have. It's www.lexingtonky.gov backslash vote. And so now it is time for us to take questions. So uh, thank you all so much. What questions do you have for myself or our county clerk or CAO Hamilton? How will, how will uh, results work? Oh, that's a Don Blevins question. So uh, results will be very unlike what we're used to. Uh, as you know, normally on election night, results trickle in. It's kind of exciting. It's usually over by 8 or 9 o'clock. That is not going to happen. Uh, we spoke with our colleagues in Colorado that have been doing vote by mail for over a decade now. They warned us that after their 12 years of doing this, they now have it down to 25% of ballots returning that final week. Well, you can see the response rate we're already seeing. If I get that many ballots the final week, uh, we're not going to be able to do it on election day. That's not going to happen. In addition, some of the ballots can, will still be counted as long as they're postmarked by June 23rd. And that means that we could still have ballots trickling in after Election Day. I posed this question to the Colorado colleagues and said, well, what happened the first year you did it? And they said, expect 40% of your ballots to come back. I'm planning for 100,000 ballots. We only did 60,000 people in person four years ago, but I'm planning for 100,000 because people are going to like this. And I think our turnout's going to go way up. I have the capacity to do about 120,000. We go north of that. You'll hear us go glub glub next door and do the best we can. So election night, you will not see any results. What will happen is we will probably still be counting thousands and thousands of ballots for the following days. We have to have our results by June the 30th. So I'm planning to count ballots probably every day, including Saturday and Sunday before June the 30th, which is a Tuesday, and we'll probably re report our results on Tuesday. Other questions? So, Don, so, you're, <clears throat> Matt, I always like Matt, but we're all at the level. We're all at the So, you know, Matt, that you may have twice as many people voting more than twice through this method. Correct. Uh, the question was, 
are we anticipating twice as many people voting in, in the last election? The answer to that is yes. The state board has advised county clerks to prepare a total, prepare for a total uh, turnout of about 50 percent. We don't think it's going to be that high. However, we have, that's our planning limit. So we're planning, planning big in case it goes that big, and, and then if it's smaller, we'll be able to handle the, the volume. That's for total ballots. For, in Fayette County, that's 100, uh, roughly 120,000 votes. If I get all of those back at the end, that's not catastrophic, but it's going to be difficult to count them all. What changes are being made to protect poll workers? Well, the first change we're making is only having one voting location. Uh, what, at the voting location, we will have uh, masks and appropriate things. I've been in contact with the Fayette County Health Department. They've advised us on what all we need to do. We're going to follow their guidelines closely. Uh, that was helped. Uh, some of the staff that CAO Hamilton has loaned me has helped me take care of that, those kinds of things. But we'll have uh, hand sanitizer. We're going to have masks. We'll be cleaning the voting booths occasionally, doing what we can to socially distance the voters. Hopefully voters that do come that day will wear their own masks and we'll all be okay. Are there other questions? I have not heard anybody having difficulty getting a ballot. What I what I am seeing and hearing are county clerks, particularly the smaller counties, are overwhelmed. Uh, our offices mostly are closed to the public because we can't afford to lose staff for a two-week quarantine. If that happened, it would be catastrophic. From here on through June the 30th, it would be catastrophic for any county. So we're all being very, very careful. That said, our staff still has to do their normal jobs because that's how we, our fee income is how we pay, make our payroll. So it's, it's been very difficult, particularly for the smaller counties, to juggle their workforce to both do their normal jobs but also apply some of their workforce to the problem, to the election problem. In my office, we're running, uh, just for example, motor vehicle work about two days a week, and we're able to keep up with that, that level of effort. The other three days, all my motor vehicle personnel are helping with this election process. In fact, today, they're stuffing envelopes to send out to voters. I don't know that I gave you an update on numbers. We've had 46,000 requests, but I'm, I'm behind about 21,000 to, to mail out, and every day, several thousand more come in. So it's, it's kind of like treading water. We've had 46,000 requests. We had, at the start of today, we still needed to do 21,000 to mail out, which means we mailed out, what, 25,000 already. Did you get some back in too? Oh, yeah. No, that's a great question. Sue asked how many we're getting in. Uh, up until today, it's been a trickle. Today, under normal circumstances, we get about three to five buckets of mail for vehicle renewals and the like. Today, we got 28 buckets of mail. I don't know how many thousand ballots yet. We don't. We haven't counted them, but it was a bunch. <laughs> so it, it has begun. People have started using it. Other questions? Well, I know mine will. Uh, I'll be. So I'll be filling mine out and sending it to you. It'll be in a bucket soon. <laughs> Thank you all so much.